In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a protogen model in Stable Diffusion to create amazing AI art. You won't wanna miss it. And remember, life is truly a gift. Make it count. Let's go over the protogen 2.2 model. And if you haven't done so, switch to protogen. And I'll give you a quick overview using text to image and then image to image. Now, protogen works really well with celebrities, athletes, women. But let's pretend we want to do an animated show and our main protagonist is a female Latina superhero, maybe in the Middle Ages. So what we'll do is I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, go to my little cheat sheet here, and I'm gonna copy the prompt. Now there's nothing wrong copying it. If you want inspiration, you can always go to Lexica. Lexica is pretty cool. And you can go through, see some of the generated AI art that's been created, for example, this one, and you can copy the prompt and copy it. And they do have some of the settings. Now, it doesn't tell you which model was used to generate this image. So you may not get the exact same look, but it'll get you in the ballpark. And this is the objective of this specific lesson as well, is to get you in the ballpark. Okay, what we'll do is let's go back and let me go to the negative we'll add this for the negative prompt. Now there's a lot of keywords. Remember that protogen, one of the trigger words is model shoe style. And that's close to the beginning of this prompt that will give it more significance. Another key word is unity, AK. We have the name of specific artist. We have Studio Ghibli, which is the famous Japanese animation studio. Art station is another keyword, CG society. We have intricate. So there's a lot of keywords. Highly suggest to start with all this. And also the negative prompt is really important because it'll really force the AI to generate a really cool looking artwork. Notice that several words in the negative prompt have parentheses. Stable diffusion will give more importance to these particular words. Now let's change the sampling method to DPM SDE Keras. Let's go to the sampling steps. Let's make it 30. The CFG scale, let's make it 10. And then for the width and the height, we'll make it 768, 5024. Now we're deviating away from the native 512 by 512 resolution, but this is still in multiples of 64. And then one more thing that we're going to do is I have the specific C number and I'm gonna put it in here. And then we'll go to restore faces and we'll check it. So it'll produce better eyes, better facial features. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, I would suggest leaving it at negative one so you can see what the AI will generate. Once you find that look that you like, let's lock that seed by hitting this little recycle button. In this case, for this lesson, we're going to use this seed number. And once we're done, let's hit generate. Let's take a look. And this looks amazing, fantastic. Now this will save automatically. And if we go to our Windows Explorer, if we go to our Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, there is a folder called Outputs. Let's go inside. Since we're using text to image, it'll put it inside that folder. Now, in my case, it is empty. And I'll show you why in a minute. If we go to Settings, if we go to saving images, you see this checkbox, always save all generated images. I have it disabled. It's just a personal preference for me. I just want to save the ones that I really want to save. You have that option and you can also specify the path or folder to save your images. Once you make any change in the settings, you need to apply the settings and just reload the UI. So we'll go back. Now in my case, since I'm not saving every single image, Let's say I want to save this one. You simply go here, hit save. And then there is a link. You just click on it and it'll download it on your computer. Now we have a couple options. We can send this to image to image so we can generate another image using this as a reference. We can send it to in paint where we can perhaps we want to change the background or there's something that we want to add to this, maybe maybe a necklace, whatever. We can send it to in paint and then we can send it to extras where we can upscale it. And I'll show you in paint and extras in the next example. 
The Protogen model gives you that blend between 3D photorealistic and anime. But we can also go anime all the way. Let me show you. What we can do is let's take out this and let's put 90s vintage anime, which is a keyword. And I'm going to take this out. And then I'm going to put, let's put this word here. Modify this. Take this. And then we'll take this one photorealistic painting art. Let's take this out. And then we'll switch the sampling method to Euler A. The sampling steps down to 20 and the CFG scale down to seven. And we'll keep the same seed. And let's hit generate. All right, let's take a look. And this looks amazing. We are ready to do an animated or anime show. All we need now is chat GPT to write the script for us. This is really cool. This is amazing what it's generating. Now let's, let's send it to extras. Let's go to extras. And then in extras, we can upscale it and you can scale it to specific width and height. But most of the times I just scale it by a factor and we can go from one all the way to eight. Now, I don't have enough VRAM on my computer to scale it to eight. It'll crash, but I could do it up to four times the size. And for the upscaler, ESRGN for X plus is good, but I'm going to use this one for anime. This one works really well. So let's generate it. Check it out. Stick around, amigos. In the next video, we'll continue with the protogen model, but we'll be using the image to image tab. 